Hey, Faith. Hey. Got it. Yeah, it's very seamless. That wasn't as seamless that as was... I'd hoped. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends. Well, uh, as we look towards Thanksgiving, it is the time of the year for us to celebrate abundance, uh, to focus on the things that we are grateful for, right? That's hopefully what we're able to do in these coming weeks is to look around and say, you know, God is really good. God is good. But there is this reality uh, in, our, in our society right now. Inflation is kicking our butt. Uh, many of us feel like our finances are more of a curse than a blessing, aren't they? It's certainly a constant source of stress and anxiety for many of us. So today, um, we're kicking off a three-week mini-series called Money Shouldn't Make You Miserable, all right? And uh, this series really coincides with our movement towards Consecration Sunday on December 3rd. But it's part of a larger three-month uh, series that we're calling Opting Into God's Kingdom. So I'll show you what that looks like, um, opting into God's kingdom. You can see it's a takeoff of where we've been over the last number of months of dreaming about what God's kingdom is like. Um, now this season of preparation, I, you know, I understand and I know that all of you are here by choice. You're here because you want to be here. And what we're talking about in opting into God's kingdom is acknowledging that we all have um, choice in this matter, and we participate in the ways we feel called to participate. Um, this is never a place that is about guilt or heavy-handed, hey, you better. Um, this, but, but we have this invitation from Jesus to jump all in, to get all in on what's happening. And so we're going to be talking about opting into God's kingdom, and there's these three movements as a part of it. The first one is this um, series uh, on giving. As we think about generosity, what it looks like uh, to steward well what God's given us, and how we entrust those gifts for God's work to be done. As we move into December, uh, it's the season of Advent, um, our focus is on grounding. It's on grounding ourselves in God's promises. It's placing Jesus as our cornerstone. If we're not building first on Jesus, then what are we building on? And then finally, as we get into the new year, um, our theme will be around growing, discipleship. Um, how are we activated in our faith to be all that God intends for us to be? And so we see all of this as this larger piece of preparing for this next step that we're about to launch into. As this faith community moves into our new space starting on, on Christmas Eve, uh, this is all going to start to look a whole lot different. We'll see a lot of new faces showing up that maybe we haven't seen before. We will be doing things in different ways. It will all feel in many ways new and different. And it's important that more than anything, we start in the place where we hopefully always are, which is in this resting place and trusting God with all of it. And so we're preparing ourselves for this next piece, knowing that um, God is going to, is, and will continue to be moving in incredible ways. So I hope you'll join us along these next three months and all that we're doing. But today then, as we start this mini series on money shouldn't make you miserable, the, the theme today is the money talk you keep avoiding. Um, and I don't know if you picked up on this, but I kind of keep avoiding the money talk because I don't like talking about money either. But, you know, um, I think a lot of us find it hard to talk about money. Um, maybe uh, it was something where your parents never talked about it or maybe they fought about it all the time. Maybe you fight about it all the time. Um, I think most of us feel like what we do with our personal resources is our business and nobody else's, right? Well, the thing is, Jesus maybe wasn't so sure about that. Um, he often spoke about finances. He often spoke about money, and he spoke about it in deeply challenging ways. Um, that was the case in the reading we're going to read today in Mark's gospel. Jesus is encountered by um, a young man who is wealthy. He's an influencer. He is a guy who is sharp and with it and making things happen, and he comes to Jesus uh, wanting to know how, what he needs to do to get to heaven, and Jesus challenges him in a really big way. So, um, I hope today you'll have an open mind to how Jesus might be challenging you. And we're going to uh, think about uh, this issue, I hope, in bigger ways. And uh, I think the bottom line is, are you really trusting Jesus? And if you're not trusting Jesus with your finances, are you really trusting Jesus? So let's dive in and let's see this encounter he had this morning. As Jesus went out into the street, a man came running up, greeted him with great reverence and asked, good teacher, what must I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, why are you calling me good? No one is good, only God. 
you know the commandments. Don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't steal, don't lie, don't cheat, honor your father and mother. And the man said, teacher, I've from my youth kept them all. I'll pause there. Now, a couple things to recognize. First of all, as Jesus encounters this man, Jesus knows this man's heart, okay? Jesus knows where this conversation is going, and so from the beginning, he's, he's setting it up. So right away, the man calls him good, and what's Jesus' response? Why do you call me good? Now, I don't know about you, but I think I would call Jesus good, right? So we're all like, why would Jesus even say that? Well, obviously, Jesus knows where the conversation is going. Now, just a couple weeks ago here, it was Reformation Sunday, and we talked about a core piece of our theology, our belief system here, is that we're saved by God's grace through faith. In other words, there's nothing you or I do to save ourselves. It's a gift from God. We don't do the work ourselves. And that's the issue with this guy. He wants to know what he needs to check off his list, and if he checks off the right things, he's going to heaven someday. That's what he's looking for. So he, he recognizes Jesus is a guy who's checking his list pretty well. He's a good guy. So I'm going to call him good. And Jesus knows where it's going. He says, no, no, listen, no one's good. No one's good. He knows this guy needs to hear what he has to say. So Jesus is talking to him. He, then he says, well, you know, you know, the, you know the commandments. And of course, this, this very confident young man says, yeah, I've kept all of them from my youth. And we all go, sure, buddy. Sure you have. But he's convinced, he's convinced of it, right? He thinks, he knows, he looks around, I'm a pretty good guy. That's what he's saying. I'm a good dude. What Jesus is going to tell us today and remind us is that's really beside the point. I mean, of course, God wants us to be good people. God wants us to be people who are a blessing in this world. But that's beside the point in this conversation. Now, you really need to hear this next line. Um, Because this, for me, is the key of all of this conversation today. So Jesus responds to him in verse 21. Jesus looked him hard in the eye and loved him. Now just pause there. So Jesus knows where this is going, and he, he needs to challenge this guy. But he doesn't challenge him with spite. He doesn't challenge him from some place, well, let's just see what you got. He looks him in the eye, and he loves him. And then he gives him a really hard truth. Okay, So Jesus said, there's one thing left. Go sell whatever you own and give it to the poor. All your wealth will then be heavenly wealth. And come, follow me. Well, the man's face clouded over. This was the last thing he expected to hear. And he walked off with a heavy heart. He was holding on tight to a lot of things and not about to let go. Oof. So now you all know the answer to get to heaven. Sell all your stuff. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Remember, Jesus is speaking to this man, and he's challenging him with the way he needs to be challenged. Now, maybe you need that challenge. What I hope for today is that all of us will be open to being challenged by Jesus in the way that we need to be challenged, okay? And what we have here is Jesus looks him in the eye and challenges them. And he says, that's way too hard for me. He, he breaks the gaze. He looks away, walks away heavy-hearted. Too hard for me, Jesus. Not going to go there. No way, man. Now, this is a challenge for us in our faith. Are we willing to look Jesus in the eye and listen to the hard truths that we need to hear? Or do we really just want to keep our faith at the surface level that meets our needs, and we can go do our thing, right? Because this guy was really hoping that Jesus would say, you're on the right track, buddy, good job, and send him on his way. That's what the guy was looking for. He just wanted a good pat on the back, say, you're really doing great. We're, all do- we're doing great, but Jesus is calling us to experience life more deeply than that. He wants us to have abundant life, and so he challenges us in the ways that we need to be challenged. Well, for me, it's so essential in this part of the passage is the way Jesus looked at him. He looked him in the eye, and he loved him. And you all need to know that when God challenges us, when God has a hard word to speak to us, it's not, it's not because uh, God is mad or because we need to be punished or whatever we think it is. It's because God loves us, and God wants what's best for us. 
Ultimately, I think what the issue here is and what the issue is for this guy, it's about trust. Now, you've heard me talk about this before. Faith is not belief. They are not the same thing. You can believe, you can believe that the devil is real, but do you, do you have faith in the devil? Probably not. I hope not. Right? Faith is trust. Do you trust Jesus with your life? Do you trust him? And what Jesus is challenging this man with here today is to say, the, the reality is you trust yourself. You trust your own ability to check the boxes and know that you're good to go. You trust your possessions to hold you up. That's where your trust is. You don't trust God, you trust yourself. So where's our trust? Who do we trust? What do we trust? What do we place our trust in? Well, let's keep reading and see what else Jesus has to say about this today. Um, the conversation will now turn. Jesus will talk to his disciples who are watching all of this. It says, looking at his disciples, Jesus said, do you have any idea how difficult it is for people who have it all to enter God's kingdom? The disciples couldn't believe what they were hearing, but Jesus kept on. You can't imagine how difficult. I I'd say it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for the rich to get into God's kingdom. Whoa. Now, I know that all of us here in this room think that the term rich applies to somebody who has more than we have, right? Right? You ask anybody at any income level, and they'll say, you know, the rich guy's the guy up there, not me. Okay, the audience that Jesus is speaking to, first century Palestine, Israel, we're rich. We're very rich. We are very rich people. And Jesus says, it's, as easy, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for us to get into God's kingdom. Okay, Jesus, what's, what's that all about? Right? What are you talking about here? And the truth is, we, we have the luxury of being secure enough that we don't really need to trust God, do we? We have a warm home to go, go to today. We have food on the table. We have clothes on our back. That's not to say our lives are easy, but it is to say that in our culture, at least, we really don't need or have to trust God to get by. We can live with the delusion that we're okay. We've got it. We got it. So Jesus says, yeah, it's harder, harder for, a, uh, it's harder for a, a rich person to get to the kingdom of God than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Well, let's see what happens here as we move along. We read in 26, that got their attention. Then who has any chance at all, they asked, and Jesus was blunt. No chance at all, if you think you can pull it off by yourself. Every chance in the world, if you let God do it. Right? You got no shot if you're going to try to do it on your own. Every chance in the world, if you let God do it. Nothing is impossible with God. And that, my friends, is the trust that we're talking about. Trust. If you let God do it. Friends, it's, it's in the coming to the end of ourselves, in letting go of the false notion that, that we have done or can do anything to save ourselves. Um, it's in that letting go. It, it, it means realizing that all of the stuff that we're busy accumulating, it's worthless in the long run, Right? Does anybody, does anybody here ever get surprised by all the storage units that go up everywhere in this country? And we laugh, but it's kind of crazy. It's crazy. We're storing things everywhere, right? Most people have rooms in their houses just chocked full of the stuff they're storing. What is that? It means we have a lot. We have more than enough. But friends, it's when we start to, when we realize that all this stuff we're accumulating is worthless in the long run, I think that's when we start to figure things out. You see, what is the point of our lives if we're not living it in surrender to God? See, that's where Jesus is going here. We all have our things that we're busy chasing after, the things we're accumulating, the things that we, that we grab onto to give us life. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 there's one way to life, and that's to let go. That's to surrender. Because when we surrender, then 
then we can be what God intends for us to be. Then we can experience the life that God has for us. Let's read the last bit of scripture here and, and kind of start to bring this all home. So Jesus is talking to the disciples and then Peter chimes in. Peter tried another angle. We left everything and followed you. Jesus said, mark my words. No one who sacrifices house, brothers, sisters, mother, father, children, land, whatever, because of me and the message will lose out. No one. They'll get it all back but multiplied many times in homes and brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and land, but also in trouble. And then the bonus of eternal life. This is once again the great reversal. Many who are first will end up last and the last first. And so Jesus reminds us, first of all, that the kingdom of God is an upside-down kingdom. The last is first and the first are last. In other words, what our world says makes you awesome probably isn't what God says makes you awesome, all right? No, the first will be last and the last will be first. But I appreciate here, Peter says, Peter says well, look at us, God, we, Jesus, we've done it. We've done just what you said. We left everything and followed you. And Jesus says, yes, yes, you have. And he says, anyone who, who sacrifices for me, anyone will reap great blessing. And then did you catch what he said? But also trouble. But also troubles. In other words, truly following or trusting Jesus will result in abundant life. But that's not the same thing as an easy life. And I think that's the thing that as Christians, people get so out of whack. They think when, when trouble comes, well, where's God in my life? Why, isn't God, why is God allowing this to happen to me? Fair question. It's important for us to understand God doesn't promise us an easy life. In fact, an easy life means we don't need to trust God at all, right? Jesus says, I've got abundant life for you if you'll trust me. It won't be easy, but it will be filled with blessing, right? So Jesus says, if, if you get on board with what I'm doing here, you gain a whole family way beyond what you currently have. You gain blessings that you can't imagine, but it won't necessarily be easy. Why is that? Well, back to where we started this morning. What Jesus is reminding us of is that his way is a way of sacrifice. It's a way of service, perhaps even persecution and insult. But when it comes to this issue around why money makes us miserable, I think one of the reasons that is the case is because we never feel like we have enough, do we? There's never enough in the bank account or the retirement account where we go, whew, never have to think about that again, right? There's never enough. We look around and we can't afford the house or the car or the boat or whatever you name it that we really want. We don't have enough. Today, Jesus says we're looking in the wrong place to find peace. We're looking in the wrong place. As we wrap this up this morning, I want you to remember Jesus' response to this rich young man. He looked him in the eye and he loved him. Jesus is speaking into our lives today and he's saying, do you trust me? Do you really trust me? And our question this morning is, if we don't trust Jesus with our finances, do we really trust Jesus? The rich young man today caught Jesus' gaze and looked away. The challenge that I have for you this week is to not break the gaze. Can you take some time this week to really look Jesus in the eye and listen? Maybe, maybe five minutes a day, three times this week, can you just sit and talk with God about your finances? Just sit and talk with him. And I don't know what God's going to say to you, but could we just take some time to sit with Jesus, look him in the eye, and listen? What do, what do, you, what do I need to hear? What do you need to hear about that area of our lives? This guy comes up to Jesus today, and he just wants a pat on the back to say, no, keep doing what you're doing. 
truth is we all need to make some adjustments, don't we? But the one inviting us to step out in that surrender is one who loves us, who embraces us, who is ready to walk with us. Let's pray. Mighty God, Lord, today, um, we thank you that you have us no matter what. And even when we get lost in our own way, even when we're busy clinging to other things and accumulating for ourselves, we know that you're with us. And we know that you look at us with love. We pray, God, that you would give us the courage to look you in the eye. We pray that you would give us the patience and peace to sit and listen. We pray, God, that you would remind us who we are and the ways that you've got us. We pray, God, that you give us open hearts to hear your challenge and to step forward in faith. God, we pray today that, um, that you help us to really trust you, to trust you with it all. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.